Today's synth exploration is sponsored by DistroKid. So if you want to release your music onto Spotify, iTunes and other great stores, use DistroKid and my link in the description for a discount. Hello there and welcome to another Bow Beats video. Today we're gonna check out a really affordable Eurorack case. I've been really excited to check out this case. I've actually had it here for quite a long time, but I haven't had the time to open it up and check it out. So it's the Nifty case, and what I have here is the Nifty bundle. So it comes with a couple of URAC modules, and it's made by Create Audio. So in today's video, we're gonna unbox this, gonna test it out, see what it's all about, and yeah, hopefully build a little URAC setup inside of it. And we're also gonna make use of DivKid's new modules. So full disclosure, DivKid is a good friend of mine and he has designed some really cool URAC modules. We're gonna try and use them in this little build here. So that's the plan for today. So we get some URAC cables, get the power, So here we have it. It's actually a little bit heavier than I thought. It looks kind of plasticky on images and in other videos, but it's actually pretty nice. Like nice side panels, metal build. So over here we have cells and chips, which are the two included modules in this bundle, but you can get the case without the modules which can be a good idea depending on what route you want to go. So what makes this case interesting is not just the price, it's that you're actually getting quite a lot here for your money. So you have on the back here, you have USB, you have MIDI IO in and out, you also have an audio output. So what you essentially get here with this case is that you have a MIDI input, so you can take MIDI from a computer or a keyboard or something, and then you have two CV gates here and mod as well as clock that you can use to clock stuff that you can use to control synth voices, drum voices or whatever on the unit here itself or in the case itself. So I think that's pretty cool for, for the kind of money you're paying. And I was actually quite surprised about the build here. It feels a lot better to the touch than, than what I thought. So let's plug in this cable here into the recorder. And yeah, I think it's a mono output. I'm, I'm pretty certain it is. And yeah, now let's try it out. Oh, I'm still testing headphones also for that video that hopefully will come sometime in the future, the big headphones video. These are some Sennheiser HD 300 Pros, which are quite interesting. It's like the Audio-Technic M50Xs, but for bigger ears, I'd say. So let's go out into this little mixer here. I think that there's two outputs. Yeah. Sounds kind of cool. So what you heard here is the chips module and it has two different oscillators and there's also an LFO here with two outputs and a reset. So yeah, when we have rate, depth and waveform, so you can do some crazy stuff with just that. And also good to note is that the two outputs here of the LFO are different speeds. I think number two here is four times the speed of output number one here. Now let's use the cells module here. So I think I'm gonna use the CV output here to control the tuning of chip one. And basically what this is, it's like some kind of weird sequencer controller. So you can do arpeggios with it, you can do sequences with it, and you can also use it to play. So let's see here. So by holding tune and selecting one of these pads here, I can basically tune it. And there's also a way you can hit both of these together to get an unquantized uh, tuning. So let's use the LFO here, output, and into the trig input here. And 
And let's use a splitter cable here instead. So now I'm taking the LFO here into the trig input of this weird sequencer and I also tuned these four cells here for both of the outputs so I'm controlling the two different VCOs here and we get this little nice progression here. But what's really cool is that we can take an LFO here into the second trig input and get some cool variations. So let's set that up. Okay, so yeah, maybe my tuning isn't quite on point there, but uh, you get the idea. You also have an arpeggiator function, so if I hold down multiple notes here. So yes, obviously the tuning wasn't 100%, I didn't spend a ton of time tuning it, but it's actually quite usable, it's easy to set up to tune the different cells here, easy to play a arpeggio, easy to make a little sequence, and it's, yeah, it's quite a different way of interfacing. Now, I'm not sure if cells is like the go-to beginner module that I would pick up, but chips here actually offers a lot of versatility. So you have the, the two outputs here for the LFO. Um, and you, yeah, you do get a quite wide range of sounds with this module here. So for, for the money, quite interesting for a beginner, but there's also, yeah, it needs to be said, of course, that there's so many different modules that you could start out with, with Eurorack. It's, you know, you don't have to pick these two and the case, you could pick the case up. I think the case itself is a super good deal and pick that up and fill it with whatever you want really. So now let's let's do that. Let me remove this, let's fill it with some other modules and just yeah have, have some fun with it. So let's open her up here. I do think that it's a very nice touch that you get these two covers here as well with the, the module bundle. I think that if you buy the case alone, you only get the case, not these covers. I do think it's a nice way of easing people into the Eurac experience, you know, letting them cover up the power sockets. It's very easy if you don't cover them up to, for example, take a cable and have it drop in here and could potentially cause harm to the system. So I've actually had it happen. I thought like the, there was a couple of modules that were like, yeah, going on and off and, and resetting themselves, but it was actually me. Um, not having stuff covered up and accidentally touching something and yeah. I think that it's important to remember that a case like this is really made to be accessible for beginners because Eurac really isn't. It's like super niche, like in, within the synth sphere. Uh, so you have like, you know, music producers or rather you have musicians. Some of them produce their own music and then you have like music producers and, and then you have people who use soft synths and are really into that. And then you have people going all the way to hardware. And then you have people going from hardware synths to Eurac and modular. And, and then of course you go the big, the big modular route as well. So all of this is like, you know, it's, it's funneling down. It's, it's, it's actually a really small niche group that are into Eurac. So I think this goes a long way for, you know, broadening it. So we're seeing the power connectors here. It's nice. It seems pretty easy to understand how to connect things. Uh, it seems like you can't really connect the power the wrong way. Maybe it's possible, um, but mo for most part, it should be fairly easy not to blow up modules using this case. They also include this paper here that you should really follow so that you align modules correctly. A little note here on the modules, the knobs here on the modules are actually pretty nice to the touch. They also have these USBs, micro USB connections here, maybe for firmware updates, I'm, I'm not sure. So now we have some DivKit modules here to put in. So first here, in this beautiful wrapping, we have the little Ocht, 
The second one here is the random step. So this is a little bit different. We'll test it out in this video as well a little bit. So let's hope I don't blow anything up here. But yes, it should be this one. So these are the modules I'm starting out with here. I'm starting out with this big oscillator here just because I actually haven't tried it yet. It's the further generator from uh, endorphins. And then we have we have uh, amp and mixer and filter all in one module here from Dreadbox as well as an ADSR module here. So yeah, uh, a little thing to note here. Um, the case, it, it's, it's pretty deep, but one thing to do note is that when you have connectors plugged in, because the connectors are, as you can see, upright, sometimes uh, on certain spots, it will be very hard to fit a taller module. I'm not sure if this is like considered considered really tall or anything, but yeah, didn't have any problems with these modules over here, but uh, the DivKid one in particular uh, didn't fit in all spaces because of the power connectors, because they're uh, upright. So I'm not sure if you can move them somehow, but yeah, I just thought it would be good to note this. I'm gonna put his modules here by the side. You know, they can't, they can't hang out. I mean, we could even, can we fit? No, we can't fit that one. Yeah, so we could, as you can see, we can fit quite a lot in this case. We have, we have the oscillator section, we have articulation, we could put some effects here maybe, we have modulation. Mm, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna patch it up and, and see what we can make it sound like. Okay, scratch that. I actually, yeah, went a totally different route. I put in some drum modules and effects modules and some modulation because I realized what I really wanted to bring with me on vacation was kind of a, yeah, it was kind of this small modular drum machine. So we have Black Noir that I just reviewed. I'll link it in the description. We have the Dystopia. So it's a noise crush filter. Basically we have, a, a little um, a low pass here, a high pass. We have some bit reduction. We have this scatter effect that spits out random voltages, I think. And then we have a little delay unit here, which also has distortion on it, a lot of distortion. We have a wave folder, which I used a lot on the sample pack that I just released, the free sample packs. If you haven't downloaded that, you can do that as well. And then we have modulation here. So we have eight LFOs and we have the random step here from, from DivKid. And yeah. Let's listen to it. So what we're hearing now is that I'm taking the gate output here, clocking the random step here or triggering it, and then I'm taking the output here, and I think I'm getting some kind of random voltages that uh, impacts the rate of the LFO. So you can actually see here that the rate changes now and then. So it gives it this sort of moving, yeah, kind of weird fluttering sound because of the modulations that are in turn affecting the parameters on the Black Noir. So, that goes to show that you can create some really moving, interesting, yeah, drum sounds with just a small U rack like this. So here's another little bit of a janky setup that I've been using to test out the case and see if things are working as intended. So first up, I've been testing the MIDI to CV. I've been testing it with USB and I also tested the DIN MIDI and the, yeah, it seems to be working as intended. Uh, I can use the CV and gate. Uh, it's set to MIDI channel number one, if I'm not mistaken, for CV and gate number one, MIDI channel number two for CV and gate two. We have the mod and we also have the clock and the clock changes depending on the BPM I have in Machina. So that seems to be working. So while I was testing this case a little bit more in depth, I noticed one thing that is quite important depending on what kind of modules you intend to put in the case. 
and that has to do with the outputs. So there are two inputs here that go to a main mono output over here, so they are summed together. And this is really not my thing, but there's some kind of circuit here between these two inputs and the output itself. And it is possible to clip the audio to distort it before it goes to the main output. So it doesn't show up as clipping on my recorder. L let's listen here. So right now it's actually clipping. So if I turn it down, now it is as it's supposed to be, not clipping. Now the clipping for some sounds is actually, it's probably an unintended feature, but you can use it to saturate the sound a little bit, which yeah, it's an unintended feature, but it's possible. So why is this important and how does it affect your build? Well, you do want some way of attenuating, setting the level of the signal before it goes to the output. So for example, here on this module here, I actually have a mixer control here for the level. So this would be before any effects, for example. But what if it's clipping after the effects? Let me show you here. So here I'm actually running the even VCO here through this delay here. You can actually add some, some distortion on the delay, but we're not doing that right now. So it's actually quite possible to clip it. But what I'm doing to control the level is basically using an attenuator. So you could also use a VCA for example. So if I turn this up here, I'm setting the level before it goes to the output. Now an attenuator is useful in pretty much any UREC build, so there's many reasons to get one. Um, a VCA could also work just to have some kind of level control before it goes to the output if you are worried about clipping the audio. So basically, if you'd have a mixer module instead, basically that mixer module would have a level control attenuation. So this basically doesn't have it. So, so one thing I'd love to see if they ever make like a version two, I'd love just a knob here to be able to set the level before it goes to the output. That'd be really cool. Also, if you could be able to use these two um, outputs here as stereo, that could also be really cool. At, at the moment, it's just summing two mono signals together. So I really wanted to get this across because it will affect what kind of modules you're putting in the case. Now, it's definitely not a deal breaker, at least not to me. I just think that you have to be a little bit mindful of how hot a signal you're running to the outputs. So that's something to keep in mind. But like I said earlier, you can also view it as an unintended but possibly useful feature where you can actually saturate the sound by clipping it because it's not a totally unpleasant distortion or saturation of the sound. So let me just give you an example here. So what do I think about this case? Well, I think there's a lot to like here for the money, especially if you're just getting in the case, it's excellent value. Uh, I think you're paying something like 200, 250, I'll put relevant numbers down here. And for that, you're getting the, the USB interface, you're getting the MIDI to CV interface. You even have this little mixer here and yeah, it doesn't cut too many corners. So overall, actually quite impressed by it. Now, when it comes to budget URAC cases, there are a couple of different ones to pick from. I don't have a lot of experience. I have only tried a few, and the one I've tried the most is, of course, the one I'm using pretty much every day. It's the Rack Boots from Arturia. Now, this here is their 3U version. If I'm not mistaken, it's 88 HP, and it has, as you can see, a power module here on the side, and it's nicely priced around 260 euros. Um, but if we check the US prices, 
seems to be available for around 250 260 dollars in the us so the eu prices are actually quite competitive now for a brief comparison with the nifty case i'd say that with the rack boots you're paying a bit more for the build quality and the design, you can actually attach another rack brute to the legs. You can see here on the screen now from my review of the rack brutes that there's different configurations that you can use. So you're paying a bit more for the build quality and for that design. But what you're not getting is you're not getting the MIDI USB to CV interface. And since you get the entire bundle with the Nifty, compared to the 3U version of the rack brute for about the same money, you're not getting those modules either, the little sequencer and oscillator. So it's a little bit depending on what you want, what kind of route you want to go. If you just want something to start out to test the waters, then I'd say the Nifty is definitely better. But if you're seeing yourself expanding your, your, your rack a lot, if you're, you know, going all in, then the rack brute is definitely the way to go. So yeah, it's a little bit depending on what your needs are, kind of how much you're willing to invest because you will not be needing to spend a bit more money if you buy a rack brute. And since we all know that you're getting into your rack to make a lot of music and put out there, Okay, that was just a segue to today's sponsor, DistroKid. Uploading your music with DistroKid is actually really simple. You select which service you want to upload to, the number of songs, whether it's a single or an album. You pick an artist or band name or use one that you've used before. And if you already uploaded music to Spotify or iTunes, DistroKid will actually ask you if this particular artist is you and you can say yes or no. There are three different services that you can pick from and I actually like Musician Plus a lot because it gives you more options. For example, you can do customizable release date. So basically you can set a release date in the future and you can also let people pre-order your track. To upload an album cover, just click this button here and upload it. You can select language of the track, you can select primary genre as well as a secondary genre. Then you add your song title and down here you upload your audio file. Let DistroKid know who made the music and the lyrics and you can also add another songwriter here. There's also extras that you can pay for. Usually I go with the free Instagram and Facebook, basically meaning that I can use my own music in Instagram story posts, which is kind of cool. I personally don't use the store maximizer, the Shazam or leave a legacy. And then when you're done, click the checkboxes, press done, it uploads and it's usually very quick to get onto Spotify, iTunes and other stores from one or two days to maybe a week at most, generally speaking. These things do vary a bit, I've noticed. Sometimes it's super, super quick. One time I actually had it happen from one day to another with Spotify and for other services, it might take a little longer time, but usually within a week you are on the different stores, but take that with a grain of salt, of course. But overall, a great service. Go and check it out with my link in the description. So thank you so much for being here, for watching, and don't forget to join our communities over on Facebook, on Discord. I'll link all of them down below. Don't forget to hit the like button, and I hope to see you in future videos, which will be, I think, in about a week or two. I'm trying to take it slower. Actually gonna have some vacation this year. Didn't have any last year. So gonna take it a little bit slower during the summer months, but a lot of cool things are, yeah, in store for you for this autumn. So see you in the future.